Hello, my lovely listeners. I'm Dr. Mary Barson. And I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. Welcome to this episode of Real Health Health and and Weight Loss. Good morning, gorgeous ones. It's Dr. Lucy here, and I am joined by a phenomenal woman called Linda Rose. Now, Linda is based in Western Australia and is doing wonderful things to help people on their real health and maybe sometimes weight loss journey. She will, of course, be speaking at the Low Carb Road Show in Perth, and so I am thrilled to welcome her to today's podcast. Linda, welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucy. It's a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Oh, you're welcome, gorgeous. You are welcome. So uh, what I'd love to know, I'm always interested in finding out people's backstories. So tell us, how did you get into the low-carb space? What happened? Well, in uh, 2006, I developed Graves Graves disease. Horrible, horrible, horrible time of my life. And, uh, of course, that then put me on the food journey or the nutrition journey or set an inspiration in me to find out what I could do to better my health. So I was pretty naive. You know, I followed along. I listened to the endocrinologists, did all the right things from their perspective. Four years later, I developed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So I ended up losing my spleen, going through the whole drama of having to have rituximab, which is a kind of uh, immunotherapy, chemotherapy thing, which thankfully healed me. Um, I had a beautiful hematologist at that point that really... He was such a lovely gentleman. He's retired now, but I just needed that man in my life at that time. He's gorgeous. So, of course, that again inspired me to find out more and more, which then really put me in the low-carb space uh, because I realised how, I guess, sugar plays a great part in the development of cancer and how cancer feeds on that. So for me, that was my launching pad into finding out about real food, which then took me on a journey of doing a degree, finding Professor Noakes, doing all of some of his courses on the Nutrition Network, following yourself. I've listened to lots and lots of your podcasts and um, here I am today doing my thing in Western Australia. (laughs) It's great. Yes. Yeah. And I love it. And I think that for lots of us, there's always a pivotal moment, something where suddenly your health that you took for granted is actually you know, potentially at risk. And I would love it, I'm sure you would too, if people were able to start making changes before they get to that critical moment. Mm, It is because, you know, spending time in hospitals, having scans, having blood tests, it takes up so much of your time and your life. Yeah, if people could make that choice before these things develop in your body, then they're just behind the goalpost, you know, they're there winning all the way up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? It's not just time. It's money at the end of it because, you know, some people have to take time off work. Sometimes they're paying private health insurance, private fees for radiology, medications, yada, yada. So, um, yeah, it really does. I guess that health is wealth is never more true than when you're sick. Mm -mm. Absolutely. And I think it also you have to learn patience. Because when you're in hospital as a patient, you have to be patient because you're on the hospital timeline and you can't, yeah, you just got to sit and wait and take a book and know that the day is not yours. So it is time. Yeah, yeah. Almost surrender, isn't it? It's surrendering. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. So Linda, tell us now then, What? so you, you said you went off and studied. What did you study and who, what do you do now? I studied a Bachelor of Nutrition with uh, Torrens University Online. I finished that um, probably 18 months ago. Um, it was a bit extended because of COVID, so we couldn't have our graduation until that had all finished. In the meantime, I began to learn Pilates, so I'm a Pilates instructor now, and I teach that three times a week and I guess for me that's really opened my mind to the necessity to keep your muscles on your body because I teach you know all age groups but particularly I have one group of gorgeous golden oldies that I teach in our um, nursing home that is chair pilates so we do our little hour it's fantastic they're such a joyful group of ladies but I can really see the difference between the ladies that have been active and those that haven't just in their ability to stand up out of chairs, you know, what we, which is what we take for granted. But that has really taught me a lot and a couple of them are park runners. 
So they're 80 years old and they park run. And I thought, oh, if they can park run, I can park run. So I've started park running. So for me, I guess the last six months has really been focusing on retaining muscle and knowing the importance of trying to keep our bodies strong so that when we are older, we can still stand. You know, we're not frail, we're not under-muscled and over-fat. It's that whole body composition of keeping yourself well. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. And what I love is you just embodied that idea that, and you've probably heard this where, and I can't even remember who who I can attribute this saying to, but that you're, you know, you're influenced by the, you know, the sum of five or six people around you. Yeah, true. So for you, you were influenced by old women who were still active at that ripe old age of 80, running, park run, and you've gone, oh, well, if they can do it, I can do it. And so what that also means, therefore, is that you will be influencing other people around who are going, well, if Linda can do it, I can do it. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> I will say park run for me is difficult. Like I, I love it that I've done it. And I, the, brain, the brain drain when I'm actually doing the running is phenomenal. Like my brain is saying, oh, you need to stop now. Or how about having a breather? Or hold on, you probably can't really finish this. It's just... You really have to play the brain game, the mindset, and keep yourself focused on what you're doing and swish those thoughts out of the way and just keep yourself focused on what you're doing. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, that chatter? And we talk a lot about the idea that the brain has kind of two jobs. One is to keep you safe and the other one is to make you feel better. Mm. Now, particularly for people that have not done a lot of exercise or running, it feels really unfamiliar to our brain and it's scared that you're not safe. So it'll come up with all these little stories about, oh, well, you can stop now and, well, you don't want to hurt yourself or you might overdo it. You wouldn't want to do that. And it's like, It it is. It's exactly like that. Exactly what you're saying is exactly what I hear when I'm running. (laughs) Yeah. So often, you know, anything that I'm doing when my brain does a bit of that and tries to talk me out of it, I'll just remind it that it's all right, brain. We're safe. We can, we've got this. We can do it. We're, we're good. I'll remember that, Dr. Lucy, when I'm running, yeah. telling myself that. I'll have your yeah, yeah, I'm there. safe. I'm good. We can do this. Killing it. All of those things. So, yeah. So, Linda, you've now taken your, your nutrition knowledge and extended it through some learnings with the um, Nutrition Network. So, Tim Noakes, is, for those of listeners I'm sure you're familiar with, Professor Tim Noakes and his incredible work in the low-carb space. But I love the way that you're combining the nutrition but with movement. Yeah, yeah, because it goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Yes. It really goes hand in hand. And if you've got, you know, a better composition, then obviously your metabolic rate is better and you need to feed those muscles with the right nutrients to help them grow and stay there. So it really is hand in hand. Yeah. Yes. And, in fact, this... Our episode complements our Tuesday episode perfectly because we did, Mary and I did a a chat on the mighty mitochondria and how uh, mitochondria are your powerhouses, your energy source, the the factory that produces all your energy and that we need to maintain them and look after them. And we do that with good nutrition and some movement and sleep. Mitochondria, I remember learning about mitochondria in my degree are amazing, like you know, if you see them magnified, all the things that go on in there, you just can't discount how much you need to help that little factory work with what you put in your body, right? Because it's there working away for you. And if you're not feeding it with the right density of food, it, it can't work properly. No, no. And we made this analogy, and I'm sure you know my woodshed analogy and the fireplace and how your fireplace is what uses your two fuels. And so it became really obvious that actually the fireplace are your mitochondria. So if you're not cleaning out your fireplace, if you're just filling it up with dirty old soot, then it's not going to function properly. Yeah, it's a real clarity of thinking to get to that point. I think as a person, if you can get to that point and understand that concept, it's just steps you ahead a hundred steps, you know, just learning that you need to keep that goodness going into your body to help those little guys work because they're fighting for you the whole time. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want, your body wants to work like it truly does. And, you know, what we do to it is so important. And I think I just wanted to add, I started Pilates for a couple of reasons. 
I had a really dreadful back, lower back, and I was stuck on my couch four years ago. I couldn't move off my couch, and I, in the mornings I was crawling into the kitchen. Plus I had a daughter that became a bilateral amputee in this time frame, and they use Pilates to get those young women or young men up and walking. So I began teaching Pilates. So just building that strength in my core and my lower back, you know, I'm park running. So yeah, it's just phenomenal what movement can do. And you think it's not doing much, like you attend your classes and you go once a week or twice a week. You think it's not doing much, but it actually, it actually is. It is. It's a long-term goal that we have to aim for, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what I love? I mean, we sometimes talk about the idea that, you know, brushing your teeth takes 90 seconds. It doesn't feel like much, but if you don't do it, your teeth fall out. And it's the same. If a bit of movement here and there might not feel like it's doing anything, but it does. It does. It absolutely does. So I guess that's my my focus is movement, mindset, nutrition. They're the they're my pillars of health that I try and embody and bring on board to show other people. Yep. And do you know what? Another thing. So you brought up Linda about the golden oldies. So it's obviously never too late. No. Like I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm too old for all this stuff. What do you say when people are, you know, come with that thinking process? Well, I've got a couple of stories. I've got, I started kayaking with my daughter about two months ago and one of the teachers is 77, this little fellow. He's, he's got good muscles. He can carry the canoes or the kayaks down to the lake and back. And he started kayaking at 60, which is, I'm 60 now, right? So I kind of look at his name's Tad and I think, wow, where will I be in 17 years' time with my running and my kayaking if I keep this up? So it isn't ever too late. And even women that come to my Pilates groups are always saying to me, you know, a year ago we couldn't do this. And there, some of those women are heading up to 55, getting closer to 60. So it isn't ever too late. And I think we get a bit um, blasé and we use this analogy, oh, I'm getting a bit too old and I shouldn't be doing this. But I feel like, well, I know from my personal experience that you can push your body. You still can push and reach wonderful uh, events in your life and feel wonderful about yourself, you can reach those stepping stones and keep moving forward. It doesn't have to stop. I think we've been marketed to as well that getting old, you need more help, you need more this, you need more that. But really the clue is to keep independent and keep strong. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I remember that it was a Saturday morning once and uh, and I say a little old man came into my clinic because he was, he was really small muscles and he came in on, on his walking frame and it turns out that he, he has type 2 diabetes and he went to sit down, he put his frame to, aside, he went to sit down and the sheer weight of his head sort of propelled him forward and he basically face-panted onto my carpet. And all I could think of, apart from, you know, him being distressed that he he was injured, which fortunately he wasn't, but was basically he doesn't have enough muscle mass to support his skeleton. And, you know, he needed to have done some and still could do some strength training because it is never too late. And when people go, oh, you know, I'm too old, I won't bother. It's so crucial. It's so crucial to your well-being and to your ability to function. So... You know, we know that one of the biggest causes of morbidity, so morbidity for our listeners is the idea that something happens to you and it changes sort of how you can live your life, is having a fall and and breaking a hip. And for a lot of people, they'll have a fall, break a hip, go into a nursing home, never come out. Some people have a fall, break a hip and actually die. Most, you know, the stats are pretty high. You'll die within 12 months of fracturing a hip. So obviously, if we can prevent falls in the first place. Yeah, that's true. By, yeah, doing something like you're offering, like Pilates, and it doesn't have to. I think people get scared. They get worried they're going to have to be, you know, it's going to be hard. Yeah, you have to. My Pilates classes are are run at an individual basis. So, you know, I will show the ladies the exercise, then I'll show them a regression or a progression, and they can choose where they fit on that scale. There's no judgment. It's just everybody does what they can do. And some days, you know, they can stretch a bit more than yesterday or, you know, things change on what they've eaten or how they're thinking at that moment. But as long as you're just there, you show up 
and you do what you can do for yourself because it's about you. At the end of the day, everything is about me the person or you the person or this lady the person. You have to design the way you live to fit you or me. Absolutely. And in fact, that that leads in beautifully with the name of your website. I know. All right. Yes, we were talking about that. <laughs> yeah. So if people did want to look you up, Linda, how, where do they find you? They find me at thewholebody.me, which is, I really like that name. I couldn't have .com and I couldn't have AU because it was taken. So I've got thewholebody.me. Yeah. I'm, it feels settled in me to have that name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's the perfect name for you. And what about if they were to, uh, if people wanted to find you on socials, what's your handle? It's the whole body with Linda, the whole body with Linda on Facebook and Instagram. They're my two things. Yeah, so you know what? I mean, I love it, Linda, because I think for a lot of health and fitness, the industry is focused on young people and it's all about, you know, wearing whatever fancy Lorna Jane outfit and looking beautiful and being a Insta fitness inspo or whatever the phrases are. But you're out there helping people at the perhaps the older age range who are just as valid as a human as some 20-year-old buff bloke with no top on or some, you know. I think more so as well because we've got the wisdom, right? We have the wisdom as well, right? So we're not all about our body. We, We know that it's about your mindset as well. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So lovelies, Linda Rose is speaking at Low Carb Perth. So as you all know by now, we're doing the Low Carb Rose Show, going to all the capital cities with some amazing speakers. Linda Rose is one of them and she is going to be speaking on, in fact, what's the name of your topic, Linda? Um, How to live well and age. Live well and age, I think, is the topic, something along those lines. (laughs) Don't quote me, but it's close. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, I think the major thing that I certainly used to see in in the clinic was people work hard their whole lives. They work really hard. They're saving up for retirement and they get to retirement and, you know, they, they spend all their time being sick. So learning to age well can start at any age and it's vitally important. Yeah, thank you. It is. It's very important. <laughs> Excellent. All right, lovelies, that's it for us this week. Linda, as I said, speaking at Low Carb Perth, which is April 23rd. So coming up soon, you can buy your tickets at lowcarbroadshow.com and all of the details from today's episode will be in the show notes. I will see you next Tuesday with Dr. Mary and Linda, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lucy. Bye-bye. So my lovely listeners, that ends this episode of Real Health and Weight Loss. I'm Dr. Lucy Burns. And I'm Dr. Mary Barson. We're from Real Life Medicine. To contact us, please visit rlmedicine.com. And until next time, thanks thanks for for listening. listening. The information shared on the Real Health and Weight Loss podcast, including show notes and links, provides general information only. It is not a substitute, nor is it intended to provide individualized medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor can it be construed as such. Please consult your doctor for any medical concerns.